out in detail complete net property of real numbers so it is really interesting in sense that uh, it just fills the gap what we had already seen in rational number that is rational number there is a gap where why because we don't have any rational number which is equal to root 2 or we don't have any rational number which is equal to pi or we don't have any rational number which is equal to uh, e napier napier base e so there are various uh, gap in uh, rational number you can observe that uh, and those gap uh, if you take in together those are forming irrational number set of irrational number so if you uh, see in rational uh, real numbers there is no, no gap why thanks to completeness property and what is the complete completeness property we will see it in detail so coming to outline of today's lecture first i will talk about recap of uh, order property uh, ordered and algebraic when we are talking about order property of r algebraic property by default it is coming along with order property why we i had already mentioned that order pro property it is very much compatible with algebraic property of real numbers so that's why so here basically we will discuss in detail about uh, absolute value of a real number and its application to inequality and how much uh, application you uh, a strength you will see in order to uh, compute inequality and one important concept today we will define epsilon neighborhood that we are saying that that means uh, if you are at a point how if you so we are talking about only real number so we are uh, here to perform only one dimensional kind of movement then what is meaning of one dimensional movement if you are at a point and then one di dimensional movements say that either you go right or left of that point that 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 is one kind of one dimensional movement there is only one direction and if you take 180 degree turn then that becomes negative of that direction so negative of that direction also it is al aligned with the same direction so there is no issue because just you take 180 degree turns that's why uh, if you talk about uh, real number it is just depicting one direct one directional movement and uh, after that we will start completeness property and we will also have few example and in, if time permit then we will go to discuss about function in detail so remember remember that now what everything whatever you see uh, here everything would be computational in nature so first concept that uh, ordered a structure of real number how we can take benefit in order to define uh, first uh, absolute value of a real number then we will talk about inequality various inequality how we can solve that and how it is helping in order to get various bound and other kind of thing okay so bound is really uh, later you will come to know that uh, if you want to estimate something uh, from the data definitely you can't get exact value of from that data so you want to estimate so in order to estimate definitely you are performing error so you can't come say that what is the actual error because you don't know the actual value so you simply can't say that what is the error you just comment over the bound bound is very important right uh, important concept so that bound concept is just it is just one application of what we call it order property that we will see it here so what is absolute value of a real number simply absolute value of a real number it is measuring the distance of a any real number with respect to origin and we generally we define uh, absolute value of a real number we, we denote it by uh, this uh, modulus sign of a so we we can read it modulus of a so this and otherwise you can generally say it is absolute value of a and how we define it we define it like this way in this trichotomy principle that means uh, the modulus absolute value of a is uh, equal to a when a is a positive number it would be simply a becomes equal to a okay and uh, when a is equal to zero then absolute value of zero is zero itself uh, and what is that when a is negative then what would be absolute value of a it would be minus a we know that if a is negative then what we do if we add additive inverse of a both sides then we will see that minus a is greater than zero that's why we always say that modulus value is always absolute value of a real number is always greater than zero and it measure the uh, distance of a point with respect to origin symmetrically you can measure it like this way and there is one more interesting in representation or definition of um, absolute value of a that we can define it through 
a square root of a square so here a square is free it can take any real value so this one is functional approach what we call it and little bit uh, what we call it abstract as well so it will help uh, in establishing various other result so this one is simply uh, here someone is saying that uh, if there is one question which is uh, related with the absolute value of a real number then just uh, use this definition in order to uh, start with the problem so this one is the starting uh, step of solving any problem that one is associated with absolute value or modulus so this uh, few result are coming like this way so that's why all these result a1 it is talking about modulus of uh, product of a and b it is just equal to modulus of uh, that uh, absolute value of a into absolute value of b and if i'm asking to prove all these you can prove all these from the definition itself like the second one is very interesting it is coming various uh, in the various problem when you are willing to find dominant range of a function that means if you acquired the absolute value of a real number then a square would be the equal it would be equal to a square of the actual real number so this one is very interesting if someone is willing to prove this uh, result then I, as i told that uh, uh, here a is any real number and our claim is that if we acquire the absolute value of a then that would be equal to a square of the same real number so this one is our claim okay so what is the starting phase so starting phase is that a is given here okay so just uh, uh, if you don't have any information just take the definition of modulus a so what is the modulus of a what does it say that it, it is taking trichotomy principle that when a is greater than zero when a is po positive then definition of absolute value of a say that it would be equal to because a is positive so so you can uh, also geometrically visualize the meaning of absolute value so suppose this one is the origin and this one is a this one is suppose it is minus a this kind of situation if some suppose someone is willing to calculate the distance uh, of a then uh, the definitely you will measure through with respect to origin so how will measure so distance always we represent it by absolute value so how we will measure distance one dimensional distance we measure it by absolute value okay so how we will measure always we take right point first and subtract the reference one okay subtract the left one so zero is the uh, origin is the reference point that's where a minus zero is what a Geomet this one is the geometrical you can easily see that if you someone is asking find the uh, what is the modulus of negative or absolute value of negative a so simply here you can observe that this is uh, a moment in negative direction so always zero will come first here and and we have to subtract negative of a that point okay minus a so if you simplify it what you will get you will get a that kind of structure you are getting it like this way so if what is happening here if a is positive then always what we uh, we denote it uh, uh, a negative number with negative side it is not like that uh, someone is, uh, if nothing is mentioned there suppose one number is given like this way what does it mean it simply says that uh, by default you have to assume that this number is greater than zero it would be positive if nothing is mentioned there and if uh, with sign there is something it then by default you can assume that it would be less than zero so that concept is very much common to everyone so our target is to prove this one mod a square absolute value of a is equal to a square so how we can prove that so we are taking case wise so first case is that when a is positive so you can call it it is case wise proof because there are very trichotomy situation so what would be a modulus of a square it would be simply uh, a is positive so from the definition uh, modulus of a would be a and, and hence we can say that uh, a square we can uh, write like this way. better it would be systematic in a way so if a, we are taking a positive then simply from the definition of absolute value we can say that modulus of a equal to a and simply it will imply that uh, a square of 
if you do a square in a square of modulus of a it would be equal to a square simple there is a third case and a second case if you take call it case 2 it is a very obvious result if you are taking a equal to 0 then what would happen what is the distance of 0 with respect to origin it would be the point itself that distance of a point is what always it happens to be zero so you can take a modulus of zero it would be equal to zero itself so it is a very obvious kind of result so if you take a square of this one again you will get same that uh, a square of absolute value of zero is equal to a square of zero and both are equal to what equal to zero very simple there is a case three there how you can prove that Uh, that you have to take third case that a real number either it can be positive or it can be zero or it can be negative so if you, it, you are taking a real number uh, negative then simply it will imply that uh, minus a would be greater than zero so now we, we are willing to calculate uh, a square of uh, a square of a so simply in this case of in this situation what is happening that we have taken a is negative so uh, modulus of a from the definition what is that it is giving minus a okay it is giving minus a so what you do uh, here you do a squaring of modulus okay so that means you are multiplying modulus of a twice modulus of a twice so what does it mean the modulus of a is what it is negative of a and modulus of b is what so the modulus of this one is also negative of a so negative into negative or positive and a into a a square so that's why again in all these three cases we observe that uh, modulus of uh, a is a square of modulus of a is equal to a square that means uh, it is very simple kind of result it, 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 it is just proved from the definition of the absolute value directly uh, there is third property that if you are this one is really interesting in sense that uh, it is helping a lot in order to prove various result so simply what does it say that if you are taking a real number real number uh, whose modulus is less than equal to c what does this what does it talk about anyone can prove this one have you proved this one if uh, uh, modulus of a is greater, less than equal to c simply it will imply that a lies between minus c and c can we prove that so if someone is willing to see the proof proof is very simple again we have to believe in the definition of the modulus so we have to take various cases and through that we will prove the uh, mod modulus is actually uh, so here what is the, we don't go for trichotomy situation we will go for uh, dichotomy situation what is dichotomy that means simply we will put the definition of absolute value in dichotomy framework in such a way that modulus of a equal to a a when a is greater than equal to 0 why because modulus of g 0 is equal to 0 that's why we can bring this one in the first key, part of definition itself so that's why if you want to prove this result how it implies and implied by it is by implication result so how we can prove that just you start with uh, definition of uh, this dichotomy framework of the definition of absolute value that means take first case a is greater than equal to zero a is greater than equal to zero in that situation what would be modulus of a modulus of a would be a and modulus of a would be a and what is modulus of a this one is is less than equal to c it is given from the given condition so here simply it implies that and write it like this way use the given uh, hypothesis so here you remember that this one is the hypothesis and this one is the conclusion in the first implication part so and also we are having that modulus of a a is less than equal to c so simply combining these two in the first case what we are getting we are getting that a is less than equal to c now talk about second case that when 
what is happening that uh, when a is less than 0 that means a is negative number in this case from the definition of more more absolute value of a real number we know that in this case it is defined as negative of a so it would be modulus of a would be negative of a and we are already having the hypothesis that modulus of a is less than equal to c so using this uh, assumptions and the given hypothesis it will imply that uh, negative of a is less than equal to c and if you further simplify this one what you will get you will see that uh, actually a is greater than equal to minus c a is greater than equal to minus c so you can call this result this inequality one and this inequality two combine these two inequality what you will get you will get that uh, a lies between a is greater than equal to uh, minus c and here from here one we see the see that a is less than equal to uh, c so that's why we can see see that by combining uh, one and two we can say that a lies between minus c and c so very simple kind of proof you can get it so just i have taken the benefit of definition of more absolute value not more than that with the help of that easily we, we can establish this result and apart from that there are various other results here in this result what you do uh, that means if you are taking any real number any real number and you know the sign of uh, less than equal to so it is dealing with two structure it is saying that uh, either less than or equal to that means this sign is true if any one of this one is true that means either if uh, you are having two quantity and if those uh, left hand side quantity is what that one is uh, less than right hand side quantity then we can say that this inequality is true and if you suppose that the left hand side quantity is equal to right hand side quantity that in that case also we say that this uh, inequality is true this okay so that's where it is meaning of that it contains that less than and or equal to less than or equal to okay that's that situation so it is very obvious kind of result you can visualize if you someone is willing to prove you can prove in the similar situation in the same phase we know that absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero so this quantity would be always a positive quantity so you can take benefit of uh, this representation this a3 this result so what you do in the result a3 replace c by absolute value of a and you will get this inequality so it is very helpful in solving various inequality apart from that the third one is talking about triangle inequality you can also prove triangle inequality so i am giving a hint in order to prove triangle inequality remember that you need to prove all these using only this definition you don't have to use any anything else you just you have to prove this one using this one so i am giving here hint one hint is already you have already seen that if you are willing to prove that one quantity is less than or equal to some positive things some non negative quantity positive things then what you do what you do try to make that quantity in between a negative part and negative of part of right hand side and the right hand side like this way here that means i would like to say that, say that uh, modulus of a is less than or equal to c what does it means here and that means we have uh, a is actually between minus c and c so that's where same part we need to prove it here so if someone is willing to prove this result just you have to prove two result in one case you have to prove it a plus b is less than or equal to modulus of a plus modulus of b this one result another result you have to prove it here that uh, what you have to prove you prove that negative of a plus b is less than or equal to sum of absolute value of a and absolute value of b just prove these two results your job is done after that you can come in case in one case you will get this one another case you will get this so in that process you are you got this uh, uh, inequality and the similar fashion you can prove this result what you have to do here uh, um, 
it is also very simple kind of result it in, uh, include two inequality first try to prove this inequality then try to prove this inequality okay this one is the first inequality this one is the second inequality so there are two inequality so just focus on here if you are willing to prove this inequality you have to focus on this and if you are willing to prove this inequality you have to focus on a minus b so it is very simple a minus this right hand side inequality is very simple it, it is tried to derive from uh, this a pi the triangle inequality we are saying that it is triangle inequality so here replacing tri triangle inequality b equal to minus b and you will get this result it is very simple to get it okay so all these are helping in order to get bound so in finding as i told that uh, uh, in order to calculate error error so it is very difficult to directly calculate error so we try to come up with bound so it, uh, just i will try to we will try to find either upper bound or lower lower bound so one simple question we have taken it uh, through inequality and also geometrically we will solve it geometrically i, I will give both uh, approach i will talk about so here we are trying to solve that what is the uh, collection of set which such by the, this inequality here x is a any real number so we have to solve this real number anyone would like to give a hint how to proceed this one i told that a starting would be definition of the absolute value because in the both part of inequality there is an absolute value so either I start with this one or I start with some result based on that definition so anyone would like to suggest how we can proceed with this in order to solve this inequality anyone definitely you might have already tried it uh, in your plus two how to proceed with any idea yeah uh, that one is also very nice uh, you are trying to use uh, definition uh, i'm happy uh, any other approach that would be more simpler what just uh, someone told something what i could not listen it yeah why why you are squaring is it uh, uh, fine to aspire because what problem you will get when you will aspire see this result okay fine uh, you are again talking about uh, cases see this result again what is the benefit of aspiring absolute value what you observe yeah you are directly talking about uh, again uh, in a uh, different way you are talking about absolute value so uh, just uh, uh, just one approach just see it here the one approach i am saying that uh, if you do a squaring of absolute value then it becomes a square of the real number if you are doing so just take benefit of this one this uh, this a2 Yeah. Uh, remember that I haven't discussed till now critical point. Uh, that that one is very interesting point. Uh, don't discuss critical uh, critical point till differentiality is covered. So when differentiality will be covered, then we will discuss crit critical point. So that's why it it would be match. Yes. Here simple simple trick. It, just see that simple trick as I told that. Just apply a2. Apply the condition of a2. It is a, we we had already seen the proof that if you are doing aspiring of uh, absolute value of a real number a, then that value would be equal to the square of a square of that uh, real value so just we are using that okay so from there simply it will imply that uh, if you do a squaring to so a square of x minus 
one it would be less than x square and just do simplification x square x square term it will cancel out and finally we will have twice of x plus one less than zero and hence x is greater than one by two and it will give our solution that what is that that uh, it lies between x lies between one by two and infinity so it is very simple kind of application and you you can see that it is directly coming from a2 and a2 is derived from definition so indirectly using transitive property we can say that this result has been derived, derived from the definition of absolute value of a real number very simple you can go for various cases but uh, if uh, cases definitely it will be a little bit lengthy process so just you have to take benefit of this one this one is more a smarter technique okay so this one is one approach okay one one approach simple approach what is another simpler simple approach anyone see this graphical approach i think you are unable to see this graph here plot let me little few part so this graphical approach so after discussing about function we will discuss about in graphical approach as well how to plot it so remember that all these are based on i will relate all these things with composition function as well so you will see a really interesting kind of approach so here you can observe that what you do just plot uh, absolute value of x also plot absolute value of x minus 1 So it is shifted one, shifted one, right shift curve for absolute value of x. So just uh, what you do, then try to see what is the common domain in which, what is the domain in which uh, uh, this modulus of x is, what dominating this function. So usually we can say that uh, here uh, from domain, from this point, this is the intersecting point of these two functions intersecting. After that intersecting point. we see that modulus of x is dominating this modulus of x is dominating the modulus of x minus 1 so that's why our comma uh, that desired set it would be this uh, this set 1 uh, by 2 onward this one is graphical solution you have to play with uh, that shifting shifting function how to play with shifting you have to observe that this one is the shifted function this one is the actual function it is not like that this one is the very simple one apart from that there, there would be very derived result as well so second approach we talk about graphical we will talk about graphical when we will have enough idea how to trace the graph of a function then that time we will talk about the second approach as well okay now uh, we will go further to discuss about a few more interesting uh, problem so like uh, here how you can solve this one how you can solve this inequality in order to get this desired set anyone would you like to proceed with a squaring just anyone just try to comment it are you getting that you, uh, i am given i have given one problem here in this inequality how you can proceed with is it fine to proceed with a squaring very fine why some solution might miss or something else will happen yeah very nice that uh, when you, here in left hand side there is no issue with a square we had all see, already seen that uh, a square of absolute value of a real number is equal to the square of real number so there would be no issue but in left right hand side we observe a linear function if you do a squaring of this one degree will change that will go to quite it becomes a quadratic so when you are dealing with quadratic term that one is having more number of values so simply things will change then simply so that's why a squaring is not a good option here a squaring is not a good option what is the best option play with just definition of the absolute value there is no issue, issue with right hand side is with left hand side that's one, that one is dealing with absolute value of a real number so we have to play with definition of the uh, absolute value so we have to take cases wise so one case we are taking when when this uh, 
this quantity is less than equal to zero and another case when this quantity is greater than equal to zero so this in the case one we are taking uh, twice of x minus one is less than equal to zero just do simplification all this simplification i have done it through algebraic property uh, in comparison with incompatibility uh, also in uh, along with the order property so, after simplification what you are getting you are seeing that x lies between zero to infinity zero so okay there is another case that when twice of x minus one is greater than zero if twice of x minus one greater than zero simply this quantity would be what it would be just twice of x minus a okay and simplify this infinity now what you are getting x lies between minus infinity to two so we just have to take these two solution in together so our desired solution is that what x lies between minus infinity to 2 union 0 to infinity same problem you can solve it through graphical approach as well easily you can solve it just plot the graph and you can solve it all like this way what is the graph so till now i haven't discussed graphs that's why i'm not uh, proceeding with graphical approach okay because it is really interesting i will talk in detail uh, how to uh, relate shifting function with composition function so if you are very good in composition function then you can uh, you, you definitely you will be very good in plotting as well so i will discuss uh, after discussing the composition function okay so same thing and here plot is you can see it uh, like plotting directly see the plot directly plot at here you can see so this plot you can see you can talk about it is uh, modulus of twice of x minus um, twice of x minus one and this one is simple linear function x plus one okay so if you see here observe uh, what is the intersecting point just find out the intersecting point this the this is the intersecting point this is the intersecting point of these two curves that right hand side curve and left hand side curve so uh, observe in this intersected region what you observe you observe that uh, this function is behind this one this function is behind this one so at least a little bit okay did, did you notice uh, issue yeah it is x and uh, so we have to take uh, intersected region so in so it is not like directly it would be like uh, here it would come intersection intersection is coming so the solution is coming as intersection common to both so in this region 0 to 2 that means simply forget about this write it 0 to 2 in the region 0 to 2 we observe that the left hand side function is behind the right hand side function this linear function it is behind the linear in this way. apart from that what we observe that out of this region we see that modulus function is above the uh, what uh, linear function above the linear function so that uh, representation is coming now one more concept will come that if you talk about geometrical interpretation of a real number system then it is just equivalent to a real line so simply we draw a real line what mean, meaning of line uh, when we are draw, drawing a line then we always put arrow both sides that represent a line that means it will keep on moving forward and backward so that then it will represent an in, uh, line means simply it would be an infinite line so uh, geometrically we can represent a real number system through this real line representation okay and a uh, modulus of a or absolute value of a it would be what it would talk about what is the distance of a with respect to origin with respect to origin if a is here here then modulus of a is the distance if a is here uh, suppose in 
you can take it take notation b if b is here modulus of b would be the uh, distance of this point b from uh, with respect from origin so that is that one is geometrical visualization so here uh, simply if you talk take any two point what is the distance between these two point we define it through absolute value of the difference of uh, those two point a minus b so again this is the distance concept of between any two point now geometrically also you can measure all these concepts here so if you are taking two point uh, minus three and minus two and two then what is the distance between these two simply uh, take difference of this point and uh, take modulus then directly you will get it equal to five otherwise what you have to do so otherwise you have to talk about movement so you uh, what is the movement of the direction if you are moving from minus three to minus two to three or three to two so th that um, that with respect to that direction just we have to take magnitude of the um, movement that would be the distance so that that one is another approach otherwise that, that take this definition subtract uh, these two quantity and take the modulus that would give your what we call it uh, distance now there is one more interesting concept would come uh, we are calling it epsilon neighborhood of a point it is very much essential in order to understand limit continuity differentiability because when we are defining uh, limit continuity differentiality we always define these quantity in a very small neighborhood of a point so that a small neighborhood generally we denote it by epsilon neighborhood and that epsilon happens to be a very small positive real number as a small so simply you know, someone if someone is asking what is what is the measure of a small smallness then simply you can say that it might be epsilon might be as small as you possible you want so as small as possible simply you can say it like this way so how we define epsilon uh, neighborhood of a point so take a neighborhood point so we treat this a as a center and uh, we try to take all the point need just uh, within epsilon distance of a within epsilon distance of a how we denote that we say that the distance of uh, the point uh, from a is within epsilon so same thing algebraically how we can express we can express like this way uh, it is collection of all those real number such that modulus of x minus a is less than epsilon that means geometrically you can say that x is within epsilon distance of a okay so if you solve this infinity it is very simple to solve using the properties of uh, uh, absolute value of real number just you have to simplify this one simply it will imply that this quantity will lies between minus epsilon to epsilon and further simplify it then you will see that x lies between a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon so geometrically how you can visualize it you can visualize it like this way so this one is your given point a and you are trying to trace out an epsilon neighborhood so if what would be epsilon neighborhood so you are moving leftward towards up to what a minus epsilon and that one is what that one is epsilon distance epsilon away you can say say, say that epsilon away from a uh, this one also you are mo uh, moving in right direction epsilon away from a so in that process you are getting a plus epsilon so uh, epsilon neighborhood of a point in a real number system is what it is simply an open interval it uh, what is the left terminal point it is a minus epsilon and the right terminal point would be a plus epsilon okay so this would be this would be very helpful in in next part of the uh, this lecture so that's where i discuss epsilon neighborhood so now we are starting completeness property so before going to discuss completeness property of uh, a real number we have to discuss in detail about bounded boundedness of a set how how we can define different different various bound of a set so those bounds will come in here like this way so consider s happens to be a non empty subset of a real numbers okay so just that means then how we can define various bound so this set s we will call it, it is bounded above if there exists a real number u such that every member of every element of s is uh, behind a behind a what does it mean so every member of s is less less than equal to u in that case we say that u is an upper bound of s 
this this given set s okay so this one is one definition of upper bound so you will see that uh, if you are defining definition of upper bound then every set which is bound uh, bounded above is having infinitely many upper bound so if u is upper bound then u plus epsilon would be upper bound then u plus 1 u plus 2 uh, all those numbers which is greater than equal to u would be an upper bound of s so very there are various upper bound okay so in the similar way we can define lower bound of a given set how we define it uh, if we will say the set is bounded below if there exists a real number w such that every member of s is uh, greater than equal to w any question Same thing, this boundedness. Okay, <laughs> you are not ad audible. Otherwise, I, I will upload this video there as well, there in that uh, Google Classroom. You will get everything better as well. So, here, simply I would like to say that uh, what is uh, uh, bounded above and bounded below. So, bounded above that we are taking as, as it is a set of any subset of real number okay then s would have definitely and we are putting one more condition s is a non-empty set that that means s contains some real number so when we say that s is bounded above if there is a real number u such that every element of s is behind the u behind u every element of s is behind it then simply we say that s is uh, bounded above and u happens to be an upper bound of s and if you take yes yes any question okay no question then i have to proceed further in the similar fashion we are defining bounded below so all these are just basic definition okay now uh, third, there is a third concept of defining boundedness what does it mean so yes it is, we will call it bounded if it is both bounded above that means we are having upper bound for that set and that set is also bounded below that means that set is also having lower bound that means simply you can say that if you are taking any member of that set that then that member of the set will fall between two number any two real number for every member of s then we say that s is both bounded below and bounded above that means s is having various lower bound and various upper bounds okay so that's way we can say that s is a bounded set that means uh, all the member of s lies between two real number any two any two real number you have to come up with as a bound okay so these are really uh, very what we call it uh, it is not a good way to come up with various low, lower bound and various upper bound we have to single it out okay so in the set of uh, upper bound of s this set of uh, also uh, this set of in the set of upper bound of s what we have to do we have to single out their list uh, in this what we do we have to single out the least upper bound there would be various upper bound u u plus epsilon various there are various upper bound so among the various upper bound we have to single out the unique upper bound that happens to be the least upper bound and among the various lower bound of this given set we have to single out the unique lower bound that we will call it greatest lower lower bond uh, that would be uh, what uh, those those would be, would, be, would be really interesting in sense that geometrically how we can say that so uh, we are having a set s containing element like this these are the element of set s okay so here all these points you can observe that these are forming upper bounds collection of upper bounds of the given set s and all these element in right hand side these are forming collection of lower bonds of the given set S. So uh, there are various lower bonds, various upper bonds. So among the up various upper bonds, which one is the 
suitable uh, which one is the suitable upper bound with which we can proceed with uh, ideally so that happens to be the supremum of s what we are calling it supremum s or we another name of this one we say that it is the least upper bound of the given set l u b so among the upper bounds what is the least one so anyone case can say that least would be always least means you are talking about optimal in sense okay so it would be always unique likewise there are various upper bound uh, lower bound among the various lower bounds what is the unique one unique lower bound so you this is the unique lower bound you can proceed with and that you can say that uh, what is that that one is the greatest lower bound among the various lower bound which one is the greatest one this is the greatest one and that would be a uh, what we will call it in form of the set s that means every member would be greater than or equal to that that lower bound so and, uh, we call that in form of the set or we another name we can say that it is greatest lower bound of the set so there are if set is bounded above then always we can if, if we, in in case of real number always we will get greatest lower bound and least upper bound okay this that is the property of what we call it completeness property that is the completeness property so yes here i need to discuss uh, this uh, supremum that we are calling it uh, least upper bound among the various upper bound which one is the least uh, that we are calling supremum and infimum what is the infimum it is the greatest lower bound among the various lower bound which one is the greatest one so that we are calling it greatest uh, infimum so we will talk about in detail why these are coming uh, how what are the characterization uh, uh, how we can convert these things in completion framework so that's uh, that we need to define so uh, define here so suppose we are having a set s which is bounded above then definitely the in number u we will call it supremum if it satisfies two condition what are those first u is an upper bound of s what does it mean that every element of s happens to be less than equal to u just it is a being a condition of upper bound that uh, 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 u dominates every element of the given set s so simply uh, you you can say that upper bound now uh, what oh, in order to single out u what we have to say that if you take any upper bound of the given set and we will see that that upper bound happens to be greater than or equal to u then we can say that u is the least upper bound of the set s if you try to uh, write in the framework of epsilon uh, characterization you can say that if you uh, take any small as a small as positive uh, as a small as possible uh, positive real number epsilon then with respect to this epsilon there exists at least one member of the given set s such that if you deviate u little bit left you are deviating how you can deviate it you by by little bit uh, uh, you can deviate it when you subtract with uh, a small positive real number so that means if you suppose u is here then u minus epsilon would be just left of u okay just left of u so for every epsilon if you someone is taking epsilon suppose 0.001 with respect to this you will get a call it epsilon 1 with respect to this you will get a member of s the given set s that would fall here call it uh, that would fall here so this this would be point s epsilon 1 if someone is changing epsilon with respect to that change epsilon you will get another point between uh, u minus epsilon and u so simply you can say that if you uh, deviate little bit if you uh, the upper bound if you deviate by just epsilon distance uh, towards left then it would be no more lower bound why because there would be few element which would be uh, of the set which will, which would be greater than u minus epsilon that deviated part so that's way we claim that 
u is ultimately the least upper bound because it can't bear the small deviation towards left so that's why u is the smallest upper bound or supremum of s that we are calling it so it it is completely in compressor product as much as a small as a epsilon you can take based on that definitely you will get some number of s which lies between u minus epsilon and u just so that's where u minus epsilon it can't be an upper bound and hence u is the least upper bound in the similar frame so geometrically if someone is willing to see the geometry then geometry you can see like this way this is so same thing i had already explained that so here you can observe that this one is u and what you observe you took a epsilon and due to that you observe a deviation uh, this point up to this point uh, u minus epsilon is coming so between u minus epsilon and epsilon you observe a member of the set that we denoted by uh, s epsilon so with respect to each epsilon you will get uh, at least one member of the set which falls between u minus epsilon and u then we say that u is the supremum of s or uh, least upper bound of s likewise also we can define infimum how so a real number w we will call it uh, infimum of a given set s if first condition is that w must be a lower bound of s that means every member of uh, the given set must be greater than or equal to w first condition as usual law being condition of lower bound second condition is more important that one is we, we are saying that it is singling out the uh, lower bound so what is the meaning of that if you are taking any arbitrary lower bound then and that happens to be less than equal to w then we can say that if w is what greater than equal to a uh, greater than equal to any arbitrary lower bound then we can see that this is the unique lower bound that happens to be the greatest among the several lower various lower bound this is the greatest one or simply we call it infimum now same thing if you try trying to translate in epsilon framework and then how we say that if you take any epsilon any small positive real number 0 0.0, 0 0.001, 0 0.000, various 0, 0, 0, 0.01, like that way, as, as much as a small you can bear with, okay. So you can proceed with that, with respect to that uh, epsilon, definitely you will get a member of the set that we denote it by S epsilon, that would be what, uh, that, would, that would be what, less than or uh, it would be behind W minus epsilon. So it simply says that if you deviate uh, a lower bound, suppose W is here, if you deviate it, it would be plus, you deviate it by a small epsilon, then in right word direction, then definitely there exists a member of the set that we denoted by S epsilon. And we can say that W, that this W plus epsilon is no more an upper bound. It is no more in upper bound and hence what we say that w is the infimum so this one is uh, for every epsilon you will get Take, keep on changing your epsilon you, your s epsilon will keep on changing definitely you will get it so we will see those things through example